Okay, today we have a video from Officer Arundel. I'm sorry, I hope I pronounced that right. This VTuber's entitlement turned toxic. VTuber case files. Mm, interesting. VTuber's entitlement turned toxic. Oof, okay. <laughs> Welcome back, my delinquents. We have caught another VTuber case. And today it's about entitled VTubers mm. or streamers, I guess. Be cut either way here. This starts off with a rant from a VTuber that seems to have gone all over Twitter and almost I think every I did see VTuber, this. Or at least it feels like I think like, I, I think I may have seen this. Their two cents about this, so mm. we're going to go over it, but the gist of it is a little bit about how Big streamers, you toxic positivity. I'm toxic use positivity. Quotes, even you can't see my fingers. Toxic it's positivity. About the fact that big VTubers say you should be happy with small numbers. Don't feel too bad. Having five viewers or ten viewers, you should still be proud. And this person rants about how they're actually being toxic uh, and how what? they're not taking mm. consideration that people do it for a job, etc. And we're gonna go over the story. That's the beginning of the gist. But we get a lot of back and forwards this and it turned into a huge debate on Twitter which I find interesting mm, so we're gonna talk about that it is kind of interesting I want to yeah but let's get into it so this saga starts oh here I, I did see YouTube. I did see this I did see this first I'm not gonna say their name just in case I decide to blur it because I'm not 100% sure if I want to include their name in the video because I don't want someone to be bullied but mm. it, it seems to be a good equal back and forwards of agreement and yes yeah, so, but don't don't send any harassment to anybody okay agreement so I feel like there's a good balance here but if anything gets out of hand I'll blur the name but let's talk about it Tubers and streamers, I know it is meant to be encouraging, but I keep seeing posts and reminding people that five viewers is a lot. It's a full room, and they usually come from much bigger streamers. Mm. But mm. Like five people aren't going to pay rent for me. This is where it gets a bit oh, more uh, what? Five people won't give me money for groceries. The encouragement is nice, but I feel like it comes from a place of ignorance or even arrogance. For people trying to survive in today's economy, knowing five people is a full room isn't going to make a difference. We might feel good, but how much will that actually reflect on our lives? Just a reminder, sometimes these encouraging posts read more as toxic positivity than useful advice. Mm. And as you can imagine, they got a bit of backlash. Yeah, understandably. It does. A little bit arrogant it does. Ungrateful here. I will outline some of my points before reading a lot of others, because mm. Alaria, a lot of a lot of YouTubers had had their two cents into this. Mm. And I will highlight this, because I think they all had some really good mm. points in here. But I feel like the thing that's in here is that it's toxic positivity. It's not saying that five viewers are going to change your life. Yeah, it's the no. look on the positives of yeah. growth. Because a big thing that gets in people's heads... You know, it's it like, I think it's like, you know, look, it's not about... It's not like, it's not about... I think she kind of gets the wrong idea about... Um, like it almost, almost in the sense of, I feel like it's 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 almost like she's saying, or oh, like this person is is saying it's like, oh, it almost feels like condescending, and I don't think it's in that way. I think what they're saying is you should be proud of the viewership that you have because, yeah, you made five people be interested in your content and want to engage with you. You know, even in in terms of like anything, any content creating, you know, be like, you should be proud of the fact that you've built up an audience for yourself. That is something that you should be proud of. There's an accomplishment for you as an individual. Don't compare yourself to bigger creators. Don't compare yourself to others in the sense of, obviously I'm a creator myself. It's not about, like obviously to a certain extent unconsciously, yes, I compare myself to other creators, but my achievements are my own achievements. And the only person you should compare your growth to in a sense is yourself, because, you know, that's how you grow. You should, you should be proud of your own accomplishments. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, a thousand subscribers um, in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot, but for a lot of people, that is an amazing, that's a massive achievement. And you should be proud of that. You should be proud of the fact that you got about 1,000 people to click, you know, a subscribe button to watch you on YouTube. You know, you should be proud of that. And I think that is more of what they are saying, that, oh, you should be proud of your achievements and you should be proud of what you have built for yourself. And 
you know, it's 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 that thing that I don't really like this in the sense of, you know, talking about, oh, much bigger streamers saying these things. Because at the end of the day, these bigger streamers were, you know, these people with five viewers at some point, you know, because that's how you start off. You know, that's how you build. You build upon what you have and you grow from that. These these, you know, big VTubers, these bigger creators, they did want, they were once small creators because that's how that works, you know? They were those people that once had like a thousand subscribers or five or 10 viewers, but they kept on going, they kept on growing, they kept on working hard. And I think that in a way it's sort of trying to, I think, give people encouragement and saying, hey, you know, I was, you know, I was the same as you, you should be proud of what you have and you should continue working hard and following your dreams and following your aspirations. And that's how I sort of see it. You know, um, you know, that's sort of what I say to, you know, my friends, you know, I have friends and, and they see me as like a big, a big YouTuber. Or they see me as like a big channel and, you know, they sort of like compare themselves in the sense of like, you know, they'll be like, oh, I only have a hundred subscribers, but you have like 20,000 subscribers. It's like, no, you shouldn't compare yourself to me like that. It's like, you should be proud of the fact that you have a hundred subscribers and I, sh and, and I can't take that away from you. That's an achievement for yourself. And I'm proud of you and should be proud of yourself for doing that. You know, never let anybody else take away um, your own accomplishments and your own sense of fulfillment is the toxicity of growth so that's why a lot of streamers and vtubers try and be positive about it because it can be so crushing yes when you think 100 it can be actually how much you need to be successful yes. in yes. this field and just because a post isn't for you doesn't make it toxic which i think is a good point mm. to outline here that if that positivity doesn't relate to you that yes. post might not be for yes you. yes and not every post of like be thankful you at least got 5 10 20 viewers because you grew you did a great job people enjoy you etc mm -hmm. it isn't meant automatically as advice it's yeah. just supposed to be keeping your mindset yeah. positive but let's get I, into I think it. it's i think it's sort of how i interpret it as i think it's supposed to be biggest streamers giving encouragement to small creators and telling them um you know keep on going keep keep on keep on doing what you're doing because if you've um you know if you have obtained a viewership of five people that's great and knowing yourself okay you've got it you've got five people watching you you can do it again you know get another five and then another five you know it's it's about because it's with content creation it is a lot of hard work and i think there's a lot of downs and especially when you're starting like and you're not getting traction it can be soul crushing you you want to give up and i think it's just big creators sort of saying to people hey like keep on going and don't give up on your dreams and your aspirations of wanting to grow you know i just don't like the idea of i don't know because like not all advice is pointed towards you. Not everything that people say needs to be, you know, or is related to you. And I don't think that you should take that as a negative or, um, you know, you know what I mean? Um, because it doesn't mean it's inherently bad. I don't think it's toxic positivity. If that positivity is not something that resonates with you, I don't necessarily think that in that sense, it means it's toxic. Maybe you interpret it that way, but it doesn't mean others interpret it that way. You know what I mean? Yes, because they do make a reply about this. Even I talk about this, and I say this because they are a disabled person too, and so am I. And I have experience with this and the different ways to make it income. Because when I was going through school, I went to university, I had to make a decision to mm. pick a job from one of the practical jobs I want or jobs I can most likely do. And that's why I settled on freelance and my art degree because i may have leaned towards teaching or something else if i was well if i wasn't mm -hmm. disabled because it's more practical but i decided to go for something that i was passionate about but was also more likely i could continuously do but that might apply here and go into others i think i feel like if streaming doesn't pay it can't be your income source and i just want to online here as in you can stream you can make a little yes, extra money yes. you love it yeah. it doesn't mean it's your main income source. Mm. It shouldn't be it shouldn't unless be. you're unless like you can a do substantial it. amount. But even for me, Twitch streaming is one of my least income sources. I really enjoy it. I really love it. But mm. it's the least money I make. And 
that is most people's experience with mm. Twitch and you should be aware of it because even though if you want to do the things you love, if you want to do them, you have to find ways to make it happen. And there are ways around this. I ran an online store and did freelance work before mostly focusing on YouTube and mm. Twitch. I actually stopped my free uh, online store so I could give streaming more of a go, then turned into YouTube and all this other stuff. Mm. And now I'm also even thinking of reopening my store saying I just did a merch launch that's going out this month. Oh, good for her. I still enjoy the work. Now I'm also disabled, but there is more out there than just streaming as an online income. Yes, there is lots of way to freelance. There's lots of way to substitute income that's why a lot of vtubers are graphic designers artists or vas or stuff i know plenty of people like i know someone who does va work on a sidekick to help with money and actually mm. pays more than that people want patreons youtube channels fanzies art requests uh, commissions people do online it coding there's a lot of things people do to substitute income. I say this as a partner streamer for two years, Twitch is still my lowest income. Having multiple incomes is the only way to do things we love to do. Mm. And I just want to add there, I know multiple that run Etsy stores too, <laughs> especially digital download stores. And Popple here, who's also a lovely VTuber, talks about the fact that I think it's because it's aimed at general hobbyists. Yes. Which is yeah. true, streaming is more of a hobby for a lot of people. And probably most of the time should stay that way mm. until you've done it for a very long time because yeah. a lot of people grind for years i know yes. some people that worked on their youtube channel for five to ten years before they made any kind of profit yes and yes. so most people can't wait that long to make money no. on a side note i don't know if you do but you can do asmr it bolster your income and yes i would say diversifying your source mm. and your content can really bolster income because realistically a lot of time with content creation if you want specifically to make income only in that you have to do a bunch of crap and yeah you do it comes really together do. as something that can feed yourself and keep you from being homeless <laughs> as funny as that sounds but freelance work it works like that too in general you do a lot of odd jobs and lots of odd things until you make an income and mm. here's terry some i mean i'll just um say my my two cents on this um because i do have a disability and so i'm um, it's not it's not a physical disability but um it is you know um mental dis um, disorder i have level two autism which i'm just going to be transparent um so i get governmental disability help my mum gets carer payment for that so as in it, it does make it hard for me to work traditionally or work traditional jobs i can but it's just hard and you know um i am somebody you know that works on this channel and 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 i'm i'm a student i'm i'm young i'm younger and in that sense because i am younger there is also that aspect of like i i'm not in as much financial you know i'm not like i I'm, i don't live on my own you know what i mean i don't I live in a house i don't have to pay rent groceries because i'm a student i get student pay at the moment so i'm not like oh i'm panicking and i need to get a job at this very moment but um if this could become a job that's great but how i see it is um and and how my viewpoint on it is is that it's not realistic for it to become a job and you can't go into it with the expectations of it becoming a job i think that mindset is wrong because um and and i feel like some people may take i don't know if specifically they were trying to interpret it and in what they were saying as um entitled but it does feel and come across as entitlement in the sense of being like oh well i i only have five five viewers but i need to pay my rent i need to do this and that it's like i understand in, in a sense where you're coming from but at the end of the day, it's like, it it, also, it comes across as, you can't, at the, this job, when it's, you know, it's relying in a sense, to a certain extent, of to other people, you know, people watch your content, people donate to you, people s sub to you, they are not entitled, you are not entitled to people's engagement, you are not entitled to donations, subscriptions, any of that you aren't and you know it does come across as entitled in the sense of being like oh uh you know how could you posit how could you say this toxic positivity to me when i only have five viewers and i need to do this and that and it's like i'm sorry but it, it really just isn't realistic 
because you can't, if you have five viewers, it, at that point, it can't be a job. It just realistically can't be. People who can make this a full-time thing are probably in the top 1%. If you are coming in with into content creation with the mindset of, oh, I want this to be a job, I don't think you're going to make it because most people, most content creators I think that you talk to, it becomes a job. You're not going into it the expectation of it being a job. You can't think of it that way because it's not realistic. You need a plan B. You need to earn revenue in different ways because this is more of a hobby than a job. It should be more of a hobby because most people, 90% of people, it's going to be a hobby because you're not going to get big enough for it to become a job. And that's just realistically looking at it. That's just the real life implications of it. And I, I think that um, especially, you know, obviously, especially when it is a job where inherently, to a certain extent, you are relying on people to pay your bills and you are never entitled to that. Never, ever. And I understand where this person's coming from and being like, you know, um, be, being disabled and having disabilities, it's hard. It really is hard. But at the end of the day, no one, like, you're not entitled in, in the sense of it being a job because there's so many other people out there. There's thousands, hundreds of people that pursue this and want this to be a job and it just doesn't work out for them because, I'm, I'm, sadly, that's just how it is. It can't be a job for everybody. It's a job for the top 10%, 5%, 1%. You know, you can't expect people, you can't, you can't expect people to pay your bills for you. That's entitlement. No one is, you know, you guys aren't entitled. I'm not entitled to you guys to don't go, you know, go in my description and donate to me. I am not entitled to any of that. I am I would I would be very thankful if anybody did do that on their own accord, but I would never say that anybody needs to or has to watch me or donate to me because I see it as sort of a transaction, the sense of I give you content that you hopefully enjoy, and if you want to support me for enjoying my content, then I can't thank you enough for that. But I am not entitled to your engagement and I'm not entitled to your money in the absolute slightest. Miss Sue, I mean this respectfully, but streaming isn't meant to be a full-time job yes. for everyone. And that's no. okay. You can't rely on people no. to pay your bills. No. If streaming is something you want to do full-time at some point, then you need to work on content yes. outside of streaming. Yes. But until that time comes, you need a job outside of streaming until you can financially support yourself from mm -hmm. that and only that, or having multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. This is a common thing people go over. Some people agree with what they're doing as toxic positivity. I won't just highlight the ones disagreeing with her, but I feel like these bring good points up mm. I, it makes you sound very privileged yes. and ar arrogant to yes. say you essentially aren't grateful for five yes you is it surely a start and more than some people get so regardless mm. you should be grateful for them you're allowed to feel a need to improve and want more that's not the issue with what you said it's more you so saying you aren't grateful for what mm. you have and that makes you arrogant i i i agree with that yeah it's like saying it's kind of like just saying like you're not yeah you're not thankful for the viewership you have you're not thankful for the people that watch you you're not thankful for your own community and um you know um like it, it's 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 like ah oh, i don't i don't know it's like come on come on oh, because it's like why I kind of get the ick by this is because this is so many people, right? This is hundreds, if not thousands of people, not just in VTubing. How many content creators are out there? How many people try to pursue YouTube and Twitch? Hundreds, hundreds of people. You, Like I said, you can't go into this expecting it to be a job because it's just not realistic. I think it becomes a job, right? It's something that you do, you put the hard work in, you enjoy it, you love doing it, it's, it's a hobby, and then you make money from it, you put the hard work and you put the, the effort in, and 
money happens to come with that, you know, it becomes a job after all that hard work you put in. And even sadly, even if you put in all the hard work in the world, it may just not happen. And that's the reality of it. And you've got to, you know, you've got to look at the realistic, the realistic side of things, you know? Yes, I wanted to outline this point, and people, you're free to laugh at me with that's more than people get, but a lot of people don't know this about me. I actually started as an art streamer, and literally, I did not get affiliate until like eight months into streaming. <laughs> I did not break over six views until a year. <laughs> so you can have a laugh <laughs> at me, because most people do it a lot quicker. Mm. But as an art streamer, it was a grind. No. And I do love that time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I learned I wouldn't so laugh. Much and it really gave me some basic skills that I don't use as much anymore, that's for sure. It was a good time. Look, the thing is, um, I just don't think Twitch is realistically good for new people. I think that if you want to stream on Twitch, I feel like you should leverage some audience on other platforms to then bring over to Twitch. That's why I've never streamed on Twitch, or I never, I didn't start streaming on Twitch, because realistically speaking, streaming with nothing, streaming with no viewership, nothing at all, why should I stream to zero people for like eight hours a day instead of um, making videos, which I think has a higher chance of gaining some success and then building up building momentum from that and that's what i did i made videos instead of streams like i did videos and then i streamed with the audience i gained from videos you know if i stream now i'm streaming with an audience that i've grown so i have at least some form of audience there i don't think that growing an audience through streaming just in my head makes sense to me i think that growing an audience through like um youtube videos tiktoks makes more sense like leveraging an audience and then um transferring them to twitch or youtube or whatever makes way more sense to me because um there's a story about jinxie and jinxie like one of the biggest twitch streamers in the world before he blew up before he got big he would stream every single day for like eight hours a day he had like one viewer the same as what she is saying because it's true most people have like one to five like zero one viewers but then suddenly he brought up i'm pretty sure like he brought up because of clips because of clips on tiktok from you know um stream fails like not from twitch itself because i just don't think organically people really will grow just from twitch because twitch is a top heavy platform and i think that the algorithm on twitch pushes the top streamers and it doesn't really push people with like zero viewers like it's not gonna happen and think about how many like one viewer streamers there are you know people that are just streaming who have like one viewer um are they going to find you in those like hundreds of one viewer streamers? It's just to me, it's just not how you grow. I don't know. That's why I didn't do it. And I made my content a different way, which I was making my videos, you know? For me. And that is the thing. A lot of people don't get the opportunities others get. Even having five or ten is a lot compared to some people. Mm -hmm. And a job outside of streaming is massively in ignorant of their personal circumstances. That is also useless advice. It isn't as a disabled uh, it, person it, oh. and anyone that is disabled or oh. at least people i feel that are disabled and don't have family to rely on i have zero family to rely on financially other than i like I, I, I am fortunate enough and i'm lucky enough that i do have um you know i do have my mom that i can to a certain extent financially rely on i am lucky in that sense yes very aged grandparents and and that's just as an if i went broke i could go live with them that's about it <laughs> but the fact is even disabled people need to make incomes and through history we have to get creative mm. by taking part-time jobs mm -hmm. side hustles freelance work as we do now work from homes creating things doing things that we can do because one of the hardest things as a disabled person yes is to find the little things you can do mm. in your day-to-day -day life to make your life a bit easier because no one wants to just give up and go yes where yeah we'll never you know have more yeah that's i i just hate that sometimes um i i feel like uh disabled people like they have a defeated mindset and i completely understand it i completely do but the reality is you have to adapt to a world 
that isn't made for you. And that is the realistic thing. Because the, the world that I live in, it's not like, you know, in, in the sense of um, in, with my disability, um, the world is made for neurotypical people. And I'm a neurodivergent people, I'm a per people person who's more on the lower functioning side of things. The world isn't built for me, but the sad reality is I have to adapt to that world. And to a certain extent, I have to make money somehow. And I have to find those things that I am capable of doing to live and to survive, you know? And that's just, that's just realistically how it is. And I completely understand. I really do. But the thing is, it's just, that's how it is. Sadly, it is. You have to find a way. You I, and I know it's a struggle. I really fucking do because I struggle with that too. I don't know what the fuck um, I could do as a job, but I have to. I have to find that. You know, I do. I really have to. I really do because I have to make money somehow. You know, that's just how the world is. Sadly enough, um, you, you know what I mean. Um, but like I said, like I want to still be sympathetic. You know. Um, and I, 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 you know, I would still want to be sympathetic and I understand you know, in, the, in that sense, but it's, it's really is like, you know, tough love in that sense of, you know, I understand that you have a disability and it's hard. It really fucking is, but, um, that there are certain things you can't do, but it, it's about finding the things that you are capable of doing to help yourself. And that's just how it is. It really is. 50 bucks spare each week we spend our lives kind of learning learning the loopholes in our diseases and trying to make something work mm. and, and accepting what we can and can't do so i would say that's not useless advice because i've met other disabled no, people who no, want not streaming to be their only source of income or people who don't want to work sometimes but i'm going to focus on the disabled people mm, mm, mm. and they think it's a cure-all to them being disabled but streaming is a lot of work realistically yes it is well a lot of energy yes a, a lot of times disabled people like myself included have a limitation of it yes. i wouldn't even say it's the ideal job because you have to keep a schedule you have to stream x amount of hours and it can be overwhelming yes it's not it's not an easy it's not like an easy job inherently like it really fucking isn't like, it, it does take a lot of energy to get up and stream 10 hours, 8 hours, 12 hours a day and keep up and have energy. That is not an easy thing to do, it, especially for, you know, somebody who has, like, limited energy, right? It, it's not an easy thing. Like, I, I feel like some people, like, have this, like, magical perception of what they think, like, content creation or streaming is and that they think, like, oh, this is, like, a get out of jail free card. This is, like, a magical, wonderful job. And to a certain extent, it is a great job, right? you like it's a pri like i feel like um you are privileged in a so not not, pri not like i let's just say like not privileged um in a sense of like you don't deserve it but i mean like if i you know if i could one day get to the point where i could do this full time i feel like i'm privileged in the sense of being able to do it but at the same time acknowledging the fact that i work to get there if that makes sense um, with like bigger streamers, like, you know, saying like, oh, being in the top 1%, I'm privileged and I'm thankful being in that top 1%. Um, and I'm thankful to the people that support me if I hypothetically was, but at the same time, not taking away from the fact that me or others or whatever, or bigger streamers worked to get there or work, work hard to get to where they got to, you know, if that makes sense. Someone whose disability affects them physically. I honestly would suggest freelance work or something like that better or running a store just because you can move your hours around mm, and there's it's less more of it's a little more flexible so yeah be a bit more on it in my experience because work has bigger deadlines compared to streaming where you kind of have to be on it every single day but that's my experience with it and I think it's always good to outline you need multiple so sources of income to be safe even if you made a lot of money through streaming, I would suggest the yes, same you thing need of at least having savings. Mo and a lot. You need a plan B. You do. You need a plan B. Or multiple sources of income because if you get banned on Twitch, you are less screwed. And I think that's what a lot of people with a low viewer amount don't understand. 
that no matter what, these jobs are not consistent. Yeah, they're not, not consistent safe. at all. They're and not. Even if you do top all. off and do well, you need to do these other things because it's never going to be a safe job. It's never going to be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You're never going to mm -hmm. have 100% mm -hmm. have this income. And usually you can only the do it for The income can X fluctuate. <laughs> Enough of the rant on the money. It's prospect. not a base Let's salary. The drama of it all. Some people agree with this person's point of view. So a lot of people don't. I don't and then, really you know, some agree. Some people talk about toxic positivity isn't helpful, blah, blah, blah. But I am of the main mindset that if it doesn't apply to you, it might not be for you. Yeah, and just that's how I see it also. Just because positive sometimes doesn't mean they're not giving any advice. Because keeping your head on straight and not getting bogged down in the mental anguish of not doing well is pressed, etc. is worth a lot. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people in these jobs burn the frick out mm -hmm. so quickly because they put so yeah, much they, pressure they fizzle on being out. successful quick or making money and not looking at what they do have, that they leave or it crushes them. And that is a thing, especially in any kind of work, I feel, is to stay positive realistically. Yes, yeah. Because there's nothing that will burn your life up and make things worse than just having your soul crushed. Because but the thing is, I think people forget that because this is, I think, inherently, like, it's a very statistic, statistic-based industry in the sense of, you know, with, with me, right? You go to your youtube analytics it it tells you the numbers it will be like oh fireworks you got a one out of ten it might go down you got a 10 out of 10 video oh your views are down this month oh your income's down this month it can be very soul crushing it is a very like you can see the numbers and you can compare the numbers and that is something that can really get to you mentally and it can be very mentally straining and it's very much so this is a job it's everywhere you can see the numbers so it's very easy to compare yourself to others and be like oh well this person who um you know is in the same niche as me why did they get this many subscribers in this amount of months but i'm only on this and this amount of months and i'm not as big as they are and i want to be as big as they are what are they doing that i'm not doing you know there's so many things where it can really get to you and really fuck you over and that is why so many people so 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 many people they give up they give up before they make it because it's it is that mentally straining it really is it can be a mentally straining job in the sense of um you have to have that determination to push to push through and i think that that um you know positivity or whatever or that uh you know um advice i think from a bigger creator that people look up to can be good it can be good because to a certain extent i think that this person forgets that that bigger creator has been through that before because they were once that small streamer you know with the ambitions of getting to where they are now and they pushed through so they they know where that person's coming from because they've experienced that and i think that sort of experience and that advice can be important let's go into some replies from some other vtubers of what they thought of this situation actually before we do that i'll go into their reply here because they kind of as you can see double down a lot here and then they say that everyone read it incorrectly oh, and that no. it's a skill reading oh, or something which oh. i think they didn't like that a lot of people said they sounded rude not gonna comment on that you can make your own decision if they sounded rude or not i think but they stand by what they say pretty much oh. Whoa, this popped up more than I thought it would, and people still have the worst reading comprehension oh I've my God. seen to date. So there it is, don't uh, you know, guys? You're uh, stupid. Uh, uh, okay, uh. sorry, <laughs> I should make that joke. I don't regret posting this and stand by what I've been saying. Empty platitudes will help no one. Being positive can help people, guys. I feel so much better in my life staying mostly positive. Wallowing in self-pity and sadness just makes you sadder most of the time. That is why a lot of VTubers there in general... To make people happier, not sad. Mm -hmm. That's part of the the the, the job. It's, a, it's escapism. It's, escapism. It, it's not unhelpful to everyone. It's just unhelpful to you. Five people is a lot, yes, but it's not enough to make a career out of. And not everyone reading is trying to make a career out of it. Yeah, some people only stream as a hobby, but there's still many more that do it to make a career. 
that's fine. It just doesn't apply to you. You're telling us that okay, we shouldn't yeah. and or that it's a saturated it doesn't change the fact that it's how things are. Also don't want to be cowed for mentioning money in this economy. There's nothing mm. wrong with mentioning money. Mm. But there's another thing going that your VTubing has to make you an income and that people are disrespectful to you or toxic because they don't take into consideration your specific situation. So many people are struggling to survive in a non-box creation non-box creation jobs okay what? guys please tell me what that is i don't know is what that, that like is either office job i have no is idea what, what that is either job? where it shouldn't be looked at as greedy or distant for wanting to survive in a country or system that tries to put us down you shouldn't but guys it's luck based money is luck based especially in streaming we are yes, responsible for yes, trying to make yes, our incomes and yes. improve them through work effort whatever else it takes other people can't improve our lives no for us. no and yeah it's fine mentioning i don't know fine i don't know you find some sugar daddy or sugar mommy or something i don't know you have to work hard like a lot of my my stream guys know that i have to focus on youtube a lot of the time so i can reinvest in streaming i do love streaming but it is i'm just a one-man show you know so i'm honest with my my stream going I need to make sure YouTube videos go out on my channels because that's where the money goes to pay rent or whatever. And because I run multiple YouTube channels, but I do make some money on Twitch, but I can't stream as much as I would like because I have multiple obligations, merch launch, store, YouTube. I know, I don't, I don't have as much as she's going on. And they're aware of that and they back me up because they're like, you have to feed yourself and you can't rely on us on income. And I'm like, you right, girl? I know. And they are very supportive mm. of me doing well, other great. sides of jobs to make that happen. And I think that's a mindset a lot of people yes. have to do. Yes, yes, yes. You may love streaming, but surviving has to come, come first. Come first, yes. And no one else is responsible for your survival. And also... My motto is always take money from the companies before your fans. That's also why they're like, well, watch your mm. videos. I'm like, high five. Because we'd rather wring the money out of the AdSense. Yeah, than yeah, the yeah. The nations of people who might not be in a better situation than me at all. So saying this to everyone, thank you for watching. You helped me eat today. Love you guys. <laughs> S same to me. Same to me for watching this. Well, watch both of us, basically. And thanks for commenting, liking, subscribing, whatever you want to do there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Let's continue. Late state capitalism and nonsense succeed. Again, the money was never the main issue in the first place, though. It was a secondary statement. I'll repeat myself. Telling people empty platitudes is toxic positivity. If you want to help people positively give good, clear, and lasting advice, if you can't grasp that, then I hope you will in the future. Being positive and clear, lasting advice don't have to exist separately not everyone has the advice to give because they may not know how so yes like some people got lucky some people had people who knew better yes some people put yes. in the grind well, yes they may know, but not every vtuber knows all the tricks and tabs no because that's the thing it, it it's the reality that there's no like because the thing is right right this is the thing even if somebody was like oh i did this this and that it doesn't mean if I did this, this, and that, you know, if they were just like, okay, here's like a, a map, right? And this is what I did. This this is the route that I took. And this is everything I did. Even if somebody else did literally everything that that person did, it doesn't mean that they're going to be successful. I do think to a certain extent there is luck that goes into some goes into it to some extent um there's like certain circumstances that can go into it as well there's no like be all end all on how to be successful i don't think there is i i really don't people you know become quote unquote successful in other ways different people have different routes of how they got there um I don't think that there should be an expectation of like a creator of a bigger creator, like, you know, trying to tell people of what they did or how they did or have advice. Cause not everybody can give that advice because they don't know. They really don't. They really fucking don't. They're just doing what they're doing and it will happen to work out. And honestly, to a certain extent, that's with me too. It's like, I, I, well, I'm I, just doing what the fuck I'm doing. You know, I work hard. I don't give up. But I can't necessarily tell you to what to do to also have 20,000 subscribers or whatever. You just got to do 
what you want to do and work hard. I don't know. You know, I don't, a lot of fucking people don't have fucking any idea. They really fucking don't. Okay, a lot of, like, big creators and big streamers, they don't fucking know. They, they really don't fucking know. I mean, that's why, like, all of these, like, you know, you see, like, those scams of, like, the Jake Paul thing of, like, oh, you can become a big YouTuber if you pay $300 of my super duper ultra mega course. It doesn't work. It doesn't fucking work. Nice. But they know... Being negative doesn't help. It won't help you succeed. It'll just slowly chip away at you mentally. So I don't think being positive has to automatically be toxic positivity yeah. because they don't appreciate it. Yes. Some people really do appreciate yes. the positivity of the situation. Not everything has to be for everyone. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like this is just a, a, a bit of a way to punch up. Damn those very successful big VTubers telling me to be positive about my situation. Mm. They're just toxic. Mm. It's like, I don't know. It just feels like very odd of a mindset to have. Yeah. I can understand how it doesn't really help you in the long run or grow or make it your career, but... That's not why the statement is there. No. That not everything has to be deeply relatable. No, yes. But let's go. Like, because that's the thing, not everything has to relate to everyone. And that's just how it is. Um, not not everything somebody says can resonate with any with everyone and their own circumstances and their own experiences because it just can't. I mean, what, you're yapping to like thousands of people, hundreds of people? Of course. Of course not everything's going to fucking resonate with you. And that's okay. And I think that's perfectly okay. If something doesn't resonate with you and some advice is advice that doesn't, um, you know, retain to you, I don't necessarily think then that means it's bad or that means it's, quote, you know, toxic positivity. It's just not for you. And to an extent, you've got to realize that not everything is for you, you know? Not everything is interpreted. You can't interpret and take everything on that somebody says. You have to take things with a grain of salt to time and interpret things and change things in your own mind of how to, I guess, make it personable to you. That's kind of what I do, you know, in advice that I hear. I take things with a grain of salt, but then I sort of try to think, okay, how could I sort of interpret what they say and and then make it personable to me, if that makes sense? But I just I just oh, I just think that um this person got but her or like they, they saw the replies and it's it's like emotional tweeting. It's like they're kind of lashing out. Just don't do this on Twitter. It's not it's not healthy. This is not good, okay? It's never good. Um, it's never ever good seeing something and then replying and be like, "Oh, you're just dumb and you're wrong." It's it's not gonna help. What what do you think the response is gonna be? It's not gonna be a good one. Just some of the replies of what other streamers said, shall we? Okay, let's go into a Neko pawn. Just because you're disabled doesn't mean you're entitled to more viewers or anyone's money. Clicking people to sort you because you're disabled and streaming has to be your job as delu delusional and self entitled. Including that, there's a lot of disabled people out there. And yes, 100%. People have their own problems. This yeah. was a very good reply that they took very well, the person. They took it very well. Um, this is, this is harsh. This, you could, you could say this is like, damn, this, but this is, this is just true. It, it is. It's just facts. It's factual. Um, you're, you're not entitled to view, to more viewers. You're not entitled to anybody's money. And it doesn't matter if you're, uh, disabled or you're not disabled you're just not no matter what your your personal circumstances are you aren't entitled to people's money you, you're just not if somebody wants to support you that's great but you can't expect people to give you money or to watch you and that's just the reality of things and that's just how it works that's just how the world is um you know as a you know, as somebody who is disabled myself, or I have a disability, you know, that's, uh, I, I, I don't expect people to help me. Because the thing is, the sad thing is, is that I kind of do, to a certain extent, I have to deal with things myself. And I have to find my own way to, you know, feed myself and 
do things for myself and I'm I can't expect people to do things I can't expect others to do everything for me you know what I mean um you can't expect viewers to give you money or you can't expect more viewers to come you you kind of you have to earn that by working you have to work for it you know have their own problems this was a very good reply that they took very well the person they took it very well from karma indio i don't think it's toxic positivity as it is helpful to most people agree agree mm -mm. so in that regard it is genuine positive reframing of the mind i feel as though because your situation is a bit more unique i yes, see how yeah. it as toxic because at the end of the day it doesn't help you yes and it comes because it doesn't offer any real solution to your situation yes. to others in the same yes. situation as you being disabled i do want to offer my sincerest apology for the situation you are in i know it's not easy depending on such an unstable platform to provide income for you so i wanted to offer some ideas that might actually help you first being positive because in this i'm the same way i hate when people try to make me be positive because i've heard mm. the nice stuff a million times already and it still is this is a very it nice best when you are in very kind response field, such as streaming or content creation your best bet is to have multiple forms of income this is repeated a lot and it's always good advice so if you yes mind, you yes right law for dj hi suggest monetizing this and other platforms such as Kofi, VGen for law or etc or patreon i started patreon with only 400 followers on twitter even with f only five people join at first i was making close to an extra hundred dollars a month that, yeah, so that's behind amazing, the scenes, yeah. making content patreons can be really helpful as creators or someone doing any kind of creative projects i highly recommend i point do I, I probably need to make a patreon myself to be honest and stacking things like i mentioned do your content and switch then separating it on patreon exactly reusing contract stacking content and mm -hmm. using the skills you have are always important mm -hmm. no matter who you are if you have a skill utilize it if you can utilize it in that way that is a way to really improve your situation they say here that they are thanking them but also say they may have misinterpreted and stuff like that but they appreciate the recommendations and i think that is what the situation is a bit more is a mindset problem yes that they are in the wrong mindset for this and they may be getting a bit down about that situation yes you know? and especially as a disabled person you may be thinking you're at a disadvantage because mm, of it mm. personally i take it as an advantage because i would never have tried this job if i wasn't disabled and i think i've experienced a lot in life because of that so i'm quite happy yeah i guess because like, to it because like to an extent um because it's kind of like it's you know it, it, it's like advantages and disadvantages for things in the sense of oh because because i ha i am disabled or like i have a disability i do have more free time to put towards this than i would have if i wasn't you know and and so it's sort of about like looking at the positives in that sense because like i wouldn't have been able to put as much time into this if i didn't have my disability and and that is like and then there's that thing, but I do think that it is more of a mentality thing. It's the mentality that you're going into it with. And I think that this person, I think that mentality of going into it with the big, oh, this needs to be a job. This has to be a job or it's not the right mentality. It, I don't think that's a winning mentality going into things. Um, because you can't, I don't think you can realistically go into it with the expectation of, oh, this is going to become a full-time job. You can... You know, because, you know what I mean? Like, a, having a dream, right? This is my dream. This is my ultimate goal. And it's nice to have that, but you have to be realistic in walking up the steps towards that said goal. And going into it at the beginning and thinking, oh, this needs to be a full-time job or a, a full-time career for myself. It's just not realistic. It's, it's just not how it is. Eaten. You know, you got to be thankful for the little things in there. But there's lots of points of you can look at something, especially with positivity, negativity, advice, and not everything is one size fits all. And Olivia kind of doesn't like connect to her story, but I feel like this really points out a good idea here because it kind of refers to a similar topic. Before I became a full time content creator, I was working a 40 hour job. And part-time YouTubing like most everyone else. I know a crap ton of people who do it like this. And mm. I'm always like... Yeah, wow. Impressive, so, impressive. So much respect. I could start streaming 5.30. People would show up. It really got me through some of the days I felt down. I completely agree with this. Honestly, it keeps me going yeah. when I was like first getting over my anxiety with streaming. When I knew certain people were going to show yeah, up. Yeah, because it's like, you know, it's like... um Yes, yeah, so for me, it's like now, you know, seeing... um 
you guys or seeing people in the comments be like, I really enjoy this video. I subscribed. I, I like what you had to say. That really motivates me and that helps me push forward. So I think that's the same for a lot of people. You know, it helps gain confidence in myself. And it helps me to continue to push forwards and wanting to follow my dreams. Because knowing that even if, you know, it's 100 people or 50 people, that's still a lot of people. The fact that I have, you know, that many people that enjoy watching me is, to me, amazing. You know, even having anybody say that they like me for who I am and that they enjoy watching what I make, that is incredible you know thank you for that and um I, I think a lot of people like can you know should look in the positives or I try to look in the positives of that being like you know hey um you know even if I'm not the biggest creator in the world um the fact that I just even have some people who watch me and enjoy what I make I think that's amazing or miss me if I wasn't there and I'll be like no no I might be like anxious but I'm gonna go because they are expecting me to be there and then I'll be happy it's like once I start talking to my homies and sometimes it be like that I am always thankful for the fact of, that I am no longer an anxious Nelly thanks to my stream thank you <laughs> but yeah sometimes it do be like that and reminding yourself that people care about you and your content can be one of the most inspiring mm -hmm. things that's why I keep going every day the smile and education I get to bring to people's lives make it worth it yes exactly staying positive in any job is important yes and I feel like definitely Lines it five, ten, a hundred, a thousand, or whatever you made an impact on someone. You should be proud of that. Yes, be proud of the work because if you if you get bogged down with I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet, you'll always be unhappy because mm -hmm. realistically, mm -hmm. getting there with streaming is a long, 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 mm, long, yep, yep, road, long, long, long which process. I am in long, long, long the VTuber time. documentary we're filming. If you're a VTuber and you want to give it an interview, you will not automatically be in here, but I'll be doing a lot of interviews. Please send an email to me below or contact me on Twitter. We have a few people lined up that applied in June, but we will be making a three-part series on VTubers. Oh, so just wow. Just that in there because... I need more interviews. <laughs> but yeah, guys. And I think they don't realize how much it actually takes to get to that holy grail of full time. Insane. It insane. Is a lot of work and it's an insane a lot amount of higher work. numbers than you think. And that brings us to the end of the video. And I know it was a bit long of a rant going over this, but this is gl blowing up everywhere. And I would like it. I kind of ranted for a long time, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, I don't even, I don't know if people think like with my size, if I make like a good amount of money or whatever, I fucking don't. My, okay, I, I really don't. Um, I can be transparent. I can be transparent about what I make from AdSense and I'll just tell you straight up. I make like a hundred to two hundred dollars AUD. And this is just for my AdSense, right? Um, that's not, that's not enough. Like, it's, it's like some extra money every month or every like second month because YouTube obviously doesn't pay you every month. It's, it's, it's a little bit extra money, but obviously a hundred dollars a month is, uh, yeah, I can't live with that at all. I can't live on that at all, you know, but, um, yeah. So, uh, thank you guys, uh, for watching. If you did make it to like this far into the video, let me know down below the comments what you guys are. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.